The Play Mornings with Steph and John Replay. Good morning, world. It's January 18th, 2024. You know what's a hard word to say? What's a hard word? Thesaurus. Thesaurus. Sounds like a dinosaur. It sounds like a dinosaur, but it's not. You know what it is, right? Yeah, of course. Tell people uh, who don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, an anthology, a dictionary of words that are similar to each other. Okay, yeah. No, I knew that. Synonyms, you yeah. could say. Synonyms. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Um, but I've been thinking, why did we come up with such a hard word for the book of synonyms when maybe we could come up with something like a synonym that would be easier to say? I like this a lot. All right. So I tried um, to make it sound kind of like dictionary. So I was like, what if it was like a synonymary? Oh, that's... Yep, way easier than thesaurus. Right, and it sounds like a cinnamon bun, so it kind of makes yeah. you hungry. Cinnamon Mary. Cinnamon, yeah. Um, or similar airy. Similar airy, <laughs> which kind of sounds like similarly. So I'm not sure if that would be harder or more like a homonym. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's a homonym? Well, now I'm doubting that word because I think it might be a homophone. <laughs> <laughs> it's words that sound the words that sound the same or pronounce the same that sound differently, like air and air or rain and rain. Like <laughs> a king reigns over a area and the sky rains down with water. And what homophone? are they called? Homophone, I think. Now I'm like getting very nervous about all of these words I think are in my brain. I think that's a musical instrument. A homophone? That is it could be. I think it is. But it also might be a homophone for a Grammar term. It could be both things. <laughs> no. We are almost three weeks into January, which means people are making babies. They're making babies. They're making okay. babies all over. And uh, three weeks in, people are actually tracking the baby names so far. Are they making babies then into 2024? Or are they having, having ba babies? I think it's a little bit here, a little bit there. I think they made them a while back. Okay. <laughs> 11 months ago, they made babies. Mm -hmm. Nine months? Nine. Nine months ago. Well, Steph, I wanted to see where our names ranked on the list out of 100 different names. Okay. Mine came in at lucky number 34. Number 34. Jonathan or John? John. Jonathan was not on the list. Thank God no kid wants to get beat up. Is your name Jonathan or My John? My name is Jonathan, and that's why I say no kid wants to get beat up, because Jonathan, terrible, terrible name. Oh, no. It's, wor it's the worst. Oh, I think Jonathan's a nice name. Thank well, thank you. Steph, where do you think your name landed? Steph. Is Steph or Stephanie? Both? Stephanie. You know what? In the 90s, it would have been one of the top 10. Yeah, right? But now I don't know that I've ever met a kid named Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was like 75? You did not place out of 100 oh, names. Oh, no. Out of 100 names, you did not place. The top names for boys were Noah, Elijah, and Oliver. I like all those names. Very predictable. That's been the top names for boys for years. Have they? Oh, yeah. My nephew's name is Oliver, and that was he's five now. I have never met a person with any of those names. Really? Yeah. Wow. And the top ones for girls, which I was surprised by the last one, Olivia, Sophia, and Charlotte. Also, tons of kids named Olivia, Sophia, and Charlotte. Very, Charlotte? very, yes. Like the pig from Charlotte's Web? Okay, I'm going to let you in on a secret. The pig's name was Wilbur. <laughs> the, <laughs> the spider's name was Charlotte. Charlotte's Web. It's called Charlotte's Web. The pig is the main character. Yes, but Charlotte makes a web called Charlotte's Web. She makes a web with words in it about the pig so that they don't butcher the pig. The, the pig is terrific. The pig is... Fabulous, or whatever other names they came up with. Then who's Babe? A different movie, not even a book. I'm so. Had a really great relationship with the neighbors around our house, which I'm so thankful for. Yeah, it helps. Yeah, my husband especially, because he's always out working on cars or mowing the lawn or something. He knows everybody, and they all come out to chat with him, and he's exchanged phone numbers. And our neighbor right next door to us, they keep exchanging car starting. Um, apparatuses, I would call them, appliances. <laughs> and uh, so one of our neighbors had our trickle charger and then he had our car booster and they've just been kind of like, oh yeah, just leave it over here for me or I'll leave it over there for you type thing. And yesterday when I was driving into the driveway, 
the neighbor got like his face went white when he was putting the charger into our parked vehicle in the driveway. Okay. And he was like, uh, where's Sky? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, he's at work. But like, I didn't look at him suspiciously because I yeah. know what he's doing. And he's like, uh, he, he told me to put this in here. And I was like, <laughs> I don't care. You're fine. Like, it's all good. Yeah. But it's so funny when we get so like, you know, if you had just waited 30 seconds, I would have been done this and this wouldn't have been awkward. But yeah. instead, you pulled in right at the exact time I was doing something weird. It's such a human thing because here our whole thing is phones, phones. We got to be on social media, posting, radio content, everything like that. And I'll have our boss walk by and I will still like throw my phone down when he <laughs> walks by. I do that too. And like I would say at least 50% of my our job is on our phones. Yeah. But I still feel like I promise you I'm not texting somebody that's n- not pertaining to this or yeah. I promise you I'm not not doing something for the station. Yeah. And he's never said anything. Nope. He never thinks you should get off your phone. His phone goes off all the time. Oh, it's, he has the best ringtone. <laughs> he does. It sounds like a UFO is landing. <laughs> <It does. laughs> But it's so funny. It's like we're you're getting caught, but for no reason. It's doing what you're supposed to do. I don't know yeah. why we all act like that, but it, it does just make my skin crawl. Yeah, it's such a human thing. Side hustles. The world is expensive right now. Inflation <laughs> through the roof. And I don't want to keep talking about it, but my car is broken, so I need some extra money. Okay. So I did a little bit of research, and I have the top side hustle of 2024, I think. Any of them look like you would like to do them? Yeah, one, but we'll get to that at the very end. Steph, blogging was at the top of the list. Blogging. 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 I didn't even know people still blog. I do, because when I look up recipes, I still have to scroll to the very bottom after they say 600 different ways how delicious this recipe is. <laughs> I guess it's our blogs. Yeah, they blog, probably yeah. use the thesaurus for it. Thesaurus, thesaurus. <laughs> Next is delivering food with, like, DoorDash or anything like that. I think that's a great way to make extra cash. Problem is, I don't have a car. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. I was like, John, this is the answer. This right? is, we found it for you. And I was so excited. And then I remembered, hey, John, guess what? The reason you need cash is because of your gosh darn car. Shoot. Okay. Next. The next one is, a little weird, buying domain names. What? Yeah, like buying website names and just saving them. Okay, but then you would have to be really forward thinking, right? Like you would have to come up with domain names that you'd think people would want and oh, then plan 100%. to pay a lot of cash for. I think we could say this now because everybody knows we're Play 103. You and I kind of had a back and forth about buying Play 103 before <laughs> before we went live. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. maybe then we could have made, made a little, a little bit extra more, right? cash. Just a little bit. I don't think it's in our contract to give them the username or the website name. I also feel like we might have like been like Martha Stewart and gone to jail for that because that was like inside information on something oh. to try and flip some cash, you know? Lastly is <laughs> the one I might try. It is flipping items from Facebook Marketplace or Kijiji. Like taking a couch, cleaning it up and reselling it. I'm not sure there's much value in couches, but let's find you, you could definitely do that, but let's pick items that are, you know, low value, high return. I only want to do it if it's a couch. Why? You don't have a car. How are you going to get the couch to your house to clean up, to sell to someone else? Great question. What's a low value item, like low value item you think? <laughs> uh, maybe buy some tools from someone on Marketplace. Oh, okay. and Get some tool cleaner and things, make them look brand new again. That kind of thing. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. It's better than a yeah, couch a idea, I guess. 2024 Coachella lineup was announced. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. And with each passing year, I realize I recognize less and less actual artists. Well, you're 19 and I'm 35. So guess how I feel, John? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to take that and run with it because today I want to play a game with you. Okay. It's time for, is it an actual artist performing at Coachella? Or something John made up. Oh my goodness. All right. All right. Are you ready, Steph? I, I am as ready as I can be. Let's see how many I can get wrong. If you get two correct, you I, I'll give you the win. Okay. Yeah, if you get two correct, I'll give you the win. Thank okay. you. Okay. DJ Seinfeld. DJ Seinfeld? DJ Seinfeld. I feel like since Jerry Seinfeld is still alive, that would be kind of strange. Okay. So I'm going to say that is not Somebody performing at Coachella. Ooh, Steph, unfortunately, <gasps> that You're is incorrect. You're kidding. 
DJ Seinfeld is absolutely a real musical artist. He is performing the Sunday of Coachella. Could they not have come up with one of the other funny people in there like George Costanza who had a fake name? Well, you can't go with DJ Kramer. I think that would have been pretty great. Better than Se- DJ Seinfeld? Because Kramer is, Seinfeld is notable. Kramer, eh. You could start every s- set with like that weird noise that comes on when Kramer walks into a room. He could wear his hair like Kramer did and that really strange brown okay. kind of you know outfit. What? Yeah, I, I could- like that actually. All I right. do. I can't believe that he's real. All right. Arm. 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 A R M. A R M. Actual arm. Arm. I wonder if it's like arm yourself, or if it's like I have three of these. I'm different. Um, three of these <laughs> arms. I'm going to say that's not a real artist. That's <gasps> correct. Okay. There is an artist called Bicep. <laughs> okay. Steph. Thumble. Thumble. Like thimble, but a thumb. For your thumb, a thumble. I think that's real. Sorry, Steph. You made that up? I did. Aww. My mind is really cool. <laughs> All right. Clown core. It uh, sounds like a horror movie. It's clown core. Clown Insane core. clown posse as well. Kind of like all had those people, gigolos. Yeah, that, ICP, yeah. Yeah, juggalos, not gigolos. Um, <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say clown core is not real. Yeah. It is? It is. We have two more. You need to get one oh of these right gosh. at least for okay. you to win the game. Okay. Gorgon City. Gorgon. That sounds like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, I think. It does, right? It's real. Correct. Yay! <laughs> okay. I'll just give you one more. For, for good, good measure. measure. Okay. Scrawlb. Scrawlb. Like I like to scrawl with my <laughs> scroll and my stylus. Um... No, fake. You made that up. Ooh, you're good. Uh, you're yes, good, Steph. Three. All right. I can go to Coachella, right? That means that I won Coachella tickets on you. Well, we don't have the budget. <laughs>
I'm excited. Two days in a row. I know. This one's called gig tripping. Gig tripping. Yes. Any ideas? Okay, so gig, I'm already leaning towards like musical artists. Gig tripping. Is it, oh, when people follow the artist around? Like a groupie? Kind of, or like, um, yeah, kind of. Like say, I want to see the Stones and they're in Vancouver. I go see them in Vancouver and then they're like, hey, we're now going to go play Seattle. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to Seattle. Not quite. You are on the right trend with the artist thing. Okay. Is it um, when they go around and play places? Oh, so the artist. That's what their travel yeah. thing is called. I, I'm thinking because more and more artists are now getting it, being able to go tour. So I'm thinking, do they have to come up with a new word for like oh, gig tripping? It's like they'll go from here to there to there to there. Instead of like 35 shows a year, they're doing like 80 Okay. I, I like that you've really thought about this, but neither of those are correct. Any okay. other ideas? Uh, gig tripping. No. No. Nope. I was very confident with my first two. <laughs> All right. Let's uh... level up your lexicon. Gig tripping is um, actually also known as the Taylor Swift effect. And it's where people have figured out that they can get cheaper concert tickets in, say, another country. Mm -hmm. And so they're making a trip to go see a gig somewhere else. So for instance, um, folks reported that they were able to get cheaper Taylor Swift tickets in Amsterdam. And so they made a trip out of it by first off flying all the way to Amsterdam and seeing Taylor Swift. But then uh, I'm just going to tack on a week at the end and tour a little bit around Amsterdam while I'm there. So it's a gig trip. You're going. How you got to Amsterdam was because of the concert, but then you ended it up making it a trip. I like that. That one's not, yeah, that one's not too bad. I, I like that uh, phrase. Where would you like to go on a gig trip this year, John? New York. New York. New York. Okay, we've got to say it like that for sure. <laughs> I always feel so conflicted around this time of year. because January? Yeah, January. Because the sales are so good on Christmas items. Mm -hmm. They're marked down so low, and I just want to buy them all. What'd you say? Uh, Christmas tins. Ooh, like cookie tins, like those kind of things. Yeah, like okay. that you would put cookies in. They didn't come with cookies. Yeah. They were just tins, and they were all Christmas-themed and very beautiful. Nice. And they were marked down to 14 cents. 14 cents. Cents. Like a dime and a nickel would have gotten you one of those tins. Ho oh. ho! I know, and I was like so conflicted staring at them at the grocery store yesterday mm -hmm. thinking what can I make with these what can I do with these do I need to buy 25 of them for girl guides and yeah. give them a five dollar bill and say keep the change like what do I do to get these cookie tins and then my thought as well is I have a tiny house and I hate clutter and I hate having to store things and my husband is very adamant that we have two Rubbermaids for Christmas stuff and two Rubbermaids only. And I was like, if I buy some cookie tins, I'll have to get rid of something and I just can't do it. So I left them all there. Oh. I know. That's not the ending I was hoping for. But feel free, if you have some ideas for how to um, use cookie tins better other than saving them for the cookie exchange next year. Yeah then maybe I can justify it, so. What if I buy a whole bunch of sewing stuff just to put them in the tins? Or does that defeat the purpose? Well, that makes it not as cheap anymore if you suddenly have to buy accessories for the tin. Yeah, but I don't have stuff to put in the tin currently. All right, maybe you don't need a tin either. Maybe we should both refrain. But they're 14 cents. I know, but they're 14 cents. This is TikTok on trial. Okay, so I saw a life hack where you take your shampoo, your conditioner, your body wash, anything in a bottle in the shower, mm -hmm. and you know how you have a ledge or a shelf in your shower and stuff falls off, stuff doesn't stand upright? Yes. Well, if you have a wire one, which we do. Okay. You unscrew. You do, I don't. <laughs> well, we, uh, oh yeah, I guess my girlfriend's gone now, I'm so I sorry. do. <laughs> nice reminder there, Steph. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. You unscrew the bottle, you put it upside down, you quickly screw it on, and it stays perfect. So I tried it. What's the point? You're the trying point not to is let so it fall. So it doesn't uh, fall over. Okay. And yeah, so I did it. It was fine up until you unscrew it to use it, and everything came pouring out. I wasted about eighteen dollars worth of shampoo. 
<laughs> okay, wait, but were you supposed to unscrew it to use it, or were you just supposed to open the cap then to no, use it? No, you were supposed to unscrew it to use it. Oh, my goodness. That's one of those life hacks where the people are like, let's see if we can get people to do this, and yeah. then they're laughing um, terribly at you. Yeah, I'm starting to believe they used empty bottles because they were able to take the caps off again with nothing falling out. <laughs> Oh, so, no. uh, TikTok on trail, trail, on trial, trial? Uh, TikTok, yeah, guilty. <laughs> Adidas has been having a rough go as of late with sales and kind of partnering with maybe the wrong um, celebrities. Uh, like Mr. West? I, can't, I wasn't going to say it. I was just going to let you, you guess. It. I'll say it. All right. Well, anyway, um, the CEO of the company has now shared his cell phone number with everyone who works there so that they can share their thoughts and complaints because they were complaining that there was no transparency in the company. So, uh -huh. yeah, I just want you to guess how many people he shared his cell phone number with. He couldn't have. OK, retail workers, too, like included. Uh -huh. Like, do we think some. Poor minimum wage worker is <laughs> going to text with Mr. Adidas. Yeah, well, is now privy to his cell phone number. Y yes, I would guess that this includes their retail workers. Well, before I answer, first off, that phone number is getting out in like a day. But secondly, <laughs> 75,000. <gasps> John, you're so close. Am I? 60,000. Not really, then. I feel like... 50,000 people is, is, is pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like you were really in the realm there. Like, I would have said, oh, he shared it with a 1,000 workers, yeah, but so you were close. Like 60,000. 60,000 people. And he said that he now gets about 200 complaint calls a week only. Complaint calls? Yeah, because that's, that's what he gave the cell phone number for, was like, hey, I want to be more transparent with you. Here's yeah. my phone number. Call me if you have a problem. I get that, but I would just text him. I, I like Imagine complaining to Mr. Adidas. Maybe that's their moment. They're like, hey, maybe we'll hit it off. We'll have a great conversation, and Mr. Adidas will share some of his fortune with me. Yeah, he'll make they'll make the Yeezys after this person. Does. <laughs> Skip Jen Travel is the new trend for 2024. Never heard of it. These are just <laughs> made up words, right? Well, kind of. So Phrases, it's skip say. gen. So basically they're saying it's grandparents taking the kids on a vacation. Okay, see, once you explain it, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, you just break it down a little bit. You can figure it out. Um, and so they're saying that this is a new way for parents to have a break. They're kind of having their own vacation, even if they're just staying home. Mm -hmm. And then the kids are getting to get to know their grandparents a little more. And even if the grandparents are just taking them, say, to Edmonton for the weekend or yeah. something like that, it's the skip gen travel trend okay yeah i can get behind that it's it's sweet not sweet that the parents are like oh we need a break well i mean maybe the grandparents are like i need to be with my grandchildren please can i take them away for a week to somewhere sunny and wonderful <laughs> yeah possibly <laughs> um cool vacationing Ooh, i like the sound of that uh, uh vacationing somewhere cold is that it no, actually, it's people who are from warm climates vacationing to somewhere cooler. So, for instance, in Australia, in the hottest places, it can get to like plus 50 in the summer, which is our winter months. So Australians might vacation to somewhere like Cuba, who is experiencing their winter. Yeah, imagine going to Cuba for the coolness. Yeah, exactly. So that's a cool vacationing trend now is that people are trying to, you know, cool down from their very hot climates but not cool down like ski trip <laughs> okay i got you <laughs> and then the third silent travel Ooh, this sounds like some meditation type stuff kind of so uh, folks are saying you know there's such trendy things to go to the exact same place that everybody has gone say in positano italy and get that instagram worthy photo or yeah. stand in the very middle of the lake louise mountains and get the same picture that everyone has and now they're saying that's exhausting or say if you go home for your vacation and you end up just spending the time running around grabbing coffees with 15 different people you went to high school with now silent travel is going either without your phone or planning not to use your phone, not to post about it. You're just enjoying it for you. You're very present. I, this is very Gen Z of me. Yeah. I couldn't imagine traveling without my phone. And is it because there. you have no evidence of the trip? Like you would be like, I have to tell people or it didn't happen? That, or? but it's also like, how do you get on a plane without your pass that is difficult i yeah, will absolutely right? give you that i wouldn't feel safe without my phone yeah no, that's true too yeah but maybe that's like a thing i need to do in therapy is like work on not being so connected i don't know maybe i need to go on a silent travel trip Ooh.
Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the Steph and John Replay. Find more Steph and John at play1037.ca.